The Spanish Civil War was a military revolt against the Republican government of Spain, supported by conservative elements within the country. When the initial military coup failed to win control of their entire country, a bloody civil war ensued, fought with great ferocity on both sides. The Nationalists, as the rebels were called, received aid from fascist Italy and Nazi Germany. The Republicans received aid from the Soviet Union as well from the International Brigades, composed of volunteers from Europe and the United States. This war was an outcome of polarization of Spanish life and politics that had developed over previous decades. On one side, the Nationalists were mostly Roman Catholics, important elements of the military, most landowners, and many businessmen. On the other side, the Republicans were urban workers, most agricultural laborers, and many of the educated middle class. Politically, their differences often found extreme and vehement expression in parties such as the fascist-oriented phalange and militant anarchists. Between these extremes were other groups covering the political spectrum from monarchism and conservatism to liberalism to socialism, including a small communist movement divided among the followers of the Soviet leader Joseph Stalin and his arch-rival Leon Trotsky. In 1934, there was widespread labor conflict and a bloody uprising by miners in Austria that was suppressed by troops led by General Francisco Franco. A succession of governmental crises culminated in the elections of February 16, 1936, which brought to power a popular front government supported by most of the parties of the left and opposed by the parties of the right and what remained of the center. A well-planned military uprising began on July 17, 1936, in garrison towns throughout Spain. And by July 21st, the rebels had achieved control in Spanish Morocco, the Canary Islands, and the Balearic Islands. And in the part of Spain north of the Guadarrama Mountains, the Ebro River, except for Austria, Santander, and the Basque provinces along the north coast, and the region of Catalonia in the northeast. The Republican forces had put down uprisings in other areas, except for some of the larger Andalusian cities, including Sevilla, Granada, and Cordoba. The Nationalists and Republicans proceeded to organize their respective territories and to repress opposition or suspected opposition. Republican violence occurred primarily during the early stages of the war before the rule of law was restored but the nationalist violence was part of the conscience policy of terror. The matter of how many were killed remains highly contentious. However, it is generally believed that the toll of nationalist violence was higher. In any event, the proliferation of executions, murders, and assassinations on both sides reflects the great passions that the Civil War unleashed. The captaincy of the nationalists was gradually assumed by General Franco, leading forces he brought from Morocco. On October 1, 1936, he was named head of state and set up a government in Burgos. The Republican government, beginning in September of 1936, was headed by a socialist leader named Francesco Largo. He was followed in May of 1937 by Juan Negrin, also a socialist, who remained premier throughout the remainder of the war and served as a premier in exile until 1945. The president of the Spanish Republic until nearly the end of the war was Manuel Azana, an anti-clerical liberal. Interseen conflict compromised the Republican effort from the outset. On one side were the anarchist and militant socialists, who viewed the war as a revolutionary struggle and spearheaded widespread collectivization of agriculture, industry, and other services. On the other hand, the more moderate socialists and Republicans whose objectives were the preservation of the Republic. Seeking allies against the threat of Nazi Germany, the Soviet Union had embraced a popular front strategy and, as a result, the Comintern directed Spanish communists to support the Republicans. Both the Nationalist and Republican sides, seeing themselves as too weak to win a quick victory, turned abroad for help. Germany and Italy sent troops, tanks, and planes to aid the Nationalists, and the Soviets contributed equipment and supplies to the Republicans, who also received help from the Mexican government. During the first weeks of the war, 
The Popular Front government of France also supported the Republicans, but internal opposition forced a change in policy. In August of 1936, France joined Britain, the Soviet Union, Germany, and Italy in signing a non-intervention agreement that would be ignored by the Germans, Italians, and Soviets. About 40,000 foreigners fought on the Republican side in the international brigades largely under the command of the Comintern, and another 20,000 served in the medical or auxiliary units. By November 36, the Nationalists had advanced to the outskirts of Madrid. They laid siege to it, but were unable to get beyond the university city area. They captured the Basque northern province in the summer of 1937 and then Austrias, so that by October, they held the whole northern coast. A war of attrition had begun. The Nationalists drove a salient eastward through the Tyrol, reaching the Mediterranean and splitting the Republic in two on April 1938. In December of 1938, they moved upon Catalonia in the northeast, forcing the Republican armies there northward toward France. By February 1939, 250,000 Republican soldiers, together with an equal amount of civilians, had fled across the border into France. On March 5th, the Republican government flew to exile in France. And on March 7th, a civil war broke out in Madrid between the communist and anti-communist factions. By March 28th, all the Republican armies had begun to disband and surrender, and the Nationalist forces entered Madrid on that day. The number of persons killed in the Spanish Civil War can only be roughly estimated. Nationalist forces put the figure at over 1 million, including not only those killed in battle, but also the victims of bombardment, execution, and assassination. Though more recent estimates have been closer to 500,000 or less, but this does not include all of those who died from malnutrition, starvation, and war-engendered disease.